What's up, Planeswalkers? This is Steve for Brew Preview. Uh, this is the very first episode. We're going to focus on Gashath's son's avatar today. Um, so Brew Preview is essentially a way for us at the Collector Mania Studios, essentially, to break off into a second channel and start having a space dedicated to deck techs and basically any kind of secondary information that's not included in gameplay and Morph into Commander that we keep on the main channel and this is just a way for us to spread out a little bit spread our wings and fly you know um, so anyway like I said first one up is Gashath Sun's Avatar this is a really interesting commander um, he's a 8 cost 5 colorless Naya legendary creature dinosaur avatar he's got trample vigilance and haste so keyword suit basically and he also says whenever Gashath Sun's, A Sun's Avatar deals combat damage to a player reveal that many cards from the top of your library Put any number of dinosaur creature cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. He's also a 7-6, which adds to that keyword soup that I was talking about earlier. Um, so I've had a you know very limited experience with this guy so far since he is so new. I think he's, the card's been out for maybe like two weeks at this point. Um, a, the main th way I got to see him being played is in our commander challenge that you can find on the main channel once again. Um, Kylie played it and he had a lot of fun. He unfortunately got uh, beat down by vampires and then merfolk the next time. So <laughs> what can you do? Um, but anyway, really cool card. And I'm really interested to see essentially what we can do with the cards that we have now. And then in the future, I'll make a second video for when the rivals of Ixalan come out and kind of start adding those extra beefy additions that that set will give us. Um, first up, I wanted to talk about uh, what I would call the best dinosaurs for the deck. Uh, this is a mix of dinos that are mainly, honestly, rares, <laughs> of course, and mythics and stuff like that. So the uh, cream of the crop, I guess you'd call it. Um, first up is the Burning Suns Avatar. This is the box promo and also I think the, it's another promo, I believe. Uh, six costs, three colors, three red, which might be a little bit tricky, but I think we can, you know, work with it with our mana fixing. Six, six, dinosaur avatar. Um, when Burning Sun's avatar enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to target opponent and three damage to up to one target creature. So it's a kind of Inferno Titan-ish, not as good, of course, because it doesn't do it on swing, which would be even better. But, you know, if you think about it, this will deal with a few problems, maybe not the bigger problems, but uh, depending on if you have a staff and then you can get rid of some bigger targets or anything like that. And or he can activate your enrage mechanic. Um, usually that, you know, three damage may not be going towards one of our creatures because it might be a little bit too much for most of them. But, you know, there are definitely times where you can use that as well. So, yeah, Burning Sun's Avatar. Then we've got a Carnage Tyrant. This, of course, is probably one of the key cards for the set, and a lot of people have been looking for this card, and I really need to open it in a pack or somewhere, because paying whatever god-awful price it is at now, I think like $24 is not really feasible for me right now. Don't really want to look at that that way. So anyway, Carnage Tyrant, really interesting dinosaur, definitely really cool as far as can't, trample, hexproof, can't be countered, so it's a control player's nightmare, essentially. 7-6, of course. And then we've got a Death Gorger Scavenger. This is probably the dinosaur that I have the most experience with. Um, it acts a little bit like a scavenging use. Of course, it's not as good because you can't pay to just, you know, activate it. You can't. It's not a mana sink, I guess is what I'm after. But it definitely works for our tribe. I mean, it gains us life. It gives, makes himself a little bit bigger for the turn. And yeah, deals with a lot of problems as far as like, uh, there's a shielder in that person's graveyard. There's a Gingigataxius in that person's graveyard. Gosh, Praetors, what can you say? <laughs> um, but anyway, really cool card. I really like the artwork, how it's all shadowed and he's like munching on some guy, some dino. I've got a Goring Ceratops. Now I, I have played this card before and I've had, I've seen it being played before, but I've never really actually seen it work because people usually get rid of it right away because they realize what it does with the commander. <laughs> You know, giving Gashath double strike is not good. You do not want that to happen, you know, if you're the opponent. It, that's potentially, you know, 14 cards that you look at the top of your library and reveal all those dinosaurs and put them into play. That is a really good way to create a board really fast. Now we've got a G Kinjali Sunwing. A really, really cool card. I love it, first of all, because it's a flyer, but secondly, because it affects your opponents massively, like making all of your opponent's creatures under the battlefield tapped. It helps us swing through with our big guys, which is what we really want to do, although, you know, for the most part, our big dinosaurs have trample anyway, but regardless, it keeps those death touch blockers and all that kind of stuff away from us, and that's what we want. 
Plus, once again, I can't overstate. There's not a whole lot of flying in this deck. There's not a whole lot of reach, so having one of these guys that can block one of those potential flying threats is really good. Then we've got a Registaur Alpha. Really, really good dinosaur. This is another one of the chase cards from the set. I was lucky enough for Kylie to have pulled one in the pre-release, and then he traded it to me for some stuff he needed for his 1v1 deck. So 5 cost, 4-4. Four, four. Other dinosaurs you control have haste, which is huge. And then it creates a 3-3 three, three token when it is a battlefield. And that token also has trample. So haste trampling 3-3 three, three that got, swings at you right off the bat as long as this guy's still on the, on the board. So really cool dinosaur. I've got a Ripjaw Raptor. Probably one of my favorites. I love card draw, um, as many of you may already know from the other channel deck techs. But card draw is definitely key to me. And uh, this guy being able to take a little bit of damage and draw a card, you know, whether it's from Chump Blocks or your Staff of Nin or Pyrohemia or anything that you're using in that capacity. Really, really good. Now we've got a Thundering Spineback. This is our only true Lord so far. I'm sure there'll probably be another one in the next set or maybe even Dominaria. Who knows? Um, but other dinosaurs you control get plus one, plus one, seven cost, five, five. It also has pay six and then create a three, three green dinosaur creature token with Trample. So huge on the theme of trampling 3-3 three, three tokens so <laughs> really cool and I've got a Verdant Sun's Avatar um, in our gameplay we definitely found that this guy gained a you know, a ton of life which actually worked out for the dinosaurs really well um, for the most part most of our dinosaurs are gonna be swinging and tapping they're not all Gishath where they have you know the keyword soup of awesomeness um, but anyway 5-5 five, five for 7 not bad um, Dinosaur Avatar, which is a really cool creature type in my opinion, so really good. Plus, you know, if you include it in like a Tristani deck, it's great. So there's other uses for a lot of these cards, of course. Then we've got Awakening Sun's Avatar. This dinosaur is awesome. The artwork is epic in my opinion, you know, just having this, uh, I guess, Triceratops, uh, I guess you'd call it. Although it doesn't have three horns, so maybe it's, uh, it's a Ceratops of some type, I guess. Anyway, it's a... I don't blow up my dinosaurs, but I kill all the other creatures kind of card, which is amazing in our deck, of course. You know, especially if you reveal this off of Gishath, that is ridiculous. So, <laughs> really cool. So that's it for the best dinos. Um, now we'll break into what I would consider the second tier, like the good dinos, but not quite as good as the best. Uh, first up is our Raging Sword Tooth. Uh, 5 cost, 5-5 five, five, Trample Dinosaur. He has an interesting ETB effect where he deals one damage to each other creature, so really kind of cool for destroying a whole bunch of like uh, Avenger, of Zendikar, Avenger of Zendikar tokens. Um, also really good for turning on a very, I don't know, minor mechanic in our deck, and that's Enrage. I really wish it was upplayed a little bit more. I'm sure by the time we get to Rivals of X-Line we'll have enough, but for now it just kind of feels like a sub-sub theme, I guess. Anyway, interesting dinosaur. We'll definitely be playing it in the deck. I've got a Bellowing Agasaur. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. Really, really cool Enrage mechanic. This is one of the cards I was talking about in reference to the last card that we just talked about. Um, <laughs> being able to put plus one, plus one counters on each other creature control is amazing. You know, not uh, worrying about as much damage could be done to your creatures is great. Just a really, really cool card. Next up is our Charging Monstrosaur. A really interesting card. It's got two really good keywords on it, Trample and Haste. 5-5 uh, five, five for 5, not bad. That's why it's on the good list, essentially. Like, if you think about it, you know, those two keywords usually equal more mana cost. But this guy's very fairly costed, you know. If you think about it, you have like a Urza's Incubator out there. This guy costs 3 for a 5-5 five, five Trample with Haste. So really, really good, really punchy. Now we've got, I think, the one and only <laughs> dinosaur from the Eroded group of 15 dinosaurs or so that I would include in the deck, and that's Magmasaur. Um, there's an argument to be made for the Fungusaur, but I really just ended up not wanting it, I guess. <laughs> so this guy's really interesting. He basically, he's a 0-0 zero, zero, elemental dinosaur lizard, I guess, at this point. Uh, three colors, two red. Um, enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it, so that's kind of a sub-sub-sub theme of our deck again. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may remove a plus one, plus one counter from Magmasaur. If you don't, sacrifice Magmasaur, and it deals damage equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on it to each creature without flying and each player. So, if you think about it, if we have the other dinosaur we just talked about, and maybe a few enchantments that we'll get to a little bit later, this guy can get really, really big and you know potentially kill other opponents if it gets big enough, you know, 
or it's just an interesting way to eventually trigger your enrage mechanic. So interesting dinosaur. It uh, has yet to be played with, so I'll be interested to see what this will do. And then we've got a Rampaging Ferocidon, Ferocidon, something like that. Three costs, 3-3, uh, three, three, Menace, which I love Menace. Um, players can't gain life, so that shuts down a big part of our deck, which is why he's kind of on the fence with me. I would more or less try and include this guy in like a burn deck because of his second ability, which is whenever another creature enters the battle, or, or I guess third ability, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. So interesting mechanic. Uh, once again, he probably isn't in the main deck in my opinion, but I wanted to include him here just because he in is interesting. If you are really you know, looking for another dinosaur to throw in, I would recommend it, but I, like I said, I'm definitely not including it just because it feels more like a burn card to me than a dinosaur tribal card, so there's that. Then we've got a Ranging Raptors. This card is really, really good. Um, I wish it uh, had, a, you know, there was more ways to trigger and rage, which I guess I can find those. But anyway, um, this guy's really cool. He finds you a land every time he is essentially dealt any damage. So a great way to, to get him out there and just jump block early. You know, if somebody's swinging at you with little guys, you can usually block and keep this guy, which your opponents probably won't swing at you once you play this anyway. <laughs> But with a Staff of Nin or a mechanic like that, this card is ridiculous. You just get a land basically every turn cycle. And or if you have py Pyrohemia, you can do two lands a turn if you want to. So that's a really good way to ramp really fast and uh, get your bigger dino dinosaurs out quicker, I guess. Then we've got a Raptor Hatchling. This is similar to the one we just talked about. And really what you want to do with this guy is boost his toughness somehow. Because if you can get it to the point where this guy survives, you know, get, taking a little bit of damage, then all of a sudden you're making a ton of 3-3 tokens. That's going to be amazing. You're going to build up an army that, you know, can't really be rivaled by a whole lot. You know, 3-3s with Trample that will potentially get bigger with, like, plus one, plus one counters or other buffs is great. So, there's that. Then we've got a Ravenous, Ravenous Dagger Tooth. Um, now that I look at it, this might be a card for the Meh Dinosaurs list, which will be coming up next, but... I guess he's on here anyway. Uh, interesting way to gain life. Once again, if you're able to deal him damage and just gain the two life, really good. He's a 3-2. Not bad for filling out our curve either at 3. And Sky Terror. This is one of, I think, four flying dinosaurs, so it's a good include. Plus it's got flying and menace, and as we've talked about, you start buffing this guy. All of a sudden becomes a monster with that flying and menace combo, I guess. Really hard to block for your opponents and just really interesting. I've got a favorite of mine, that's Snapping sna Sail Back. <laughs> I almost said Snail Back. Uh, <laughs> so, really interesting card. It's got Flash. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5, 4 colors, 1 green. Uh, he's got their coveted Enrage mechanic. Uh, whenever he receives damage, essentially, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So, he'll just make himself bigger and bigger. I really like this card for its trickiness, because you can just flash it in response. You know, if somebody's swinging at you, I guess not in response, but... Uh, and then block with it, and then all of a sudden it becomes a little bit bigger of a threat if it survives, of course. So, really interesting card. And then we've got a Steadfast Armasaur. Very interesting combat trick on this guy. He's got, uh, so he's four costs, three colors, one white, vigilance, two, three. Uh, two cost ability that's one colorless, one white, and tap. Steadfast Armasaur deals damage equal to its toughness to target creature blocking it or blocked by it. So once again, you start boosting this guy, and then you can start taking out, you know, big threats that are, you know, essentially crazy enough to block this or have it be blocked by them, you know. So really interesting dinosaur. I've got the Sun Blessed Mount. This guy is mainly good to me because it can search up one of our two Planeswalkers. Um, now the Watley that this goes and gets isn't that great, but it's definitely a benefit to have it in the deck anyway, just because we're just trying to fill out our list essentially at this point, you know. As we're waiting for the once again rival of Ix Ixlan, or yeah, rivals of Ixlan cards, we're kind of sparse on things that we really want to play. So having this include isn't bad, and I would definitely say it's a decent dinosaur, mainly because of the search. That's a four, four for five, so not bad there. Plus, it can grab the planeswalker from your graveyard. So I mean, there's there's a few different applications for this card, I would say. Plus, the artwork's really cool. I've got a Sun Crowned Hunters. Another interesting card. I actually had a lot of fun playing with this in the pre-release. I'm pretty sure it'll translate to Commander. You know, 
just being able to block and then deal three damage to an opponent is really good. And once again, if you have like the Pyrohemia or the Staff of Nin, this card becomes ridiculous because all of a sudden you just start pinging everybody, you know, left and right. So, really interesting dinosaur. I wonder how many times I'll say really interesting dinosaur in this whole video. <laughs> So that's the end of good dinos there. So after that, we're going to break into what I would like to call our meh dinos. Now, these are the dinos that you'll probably include in the deck list for now. Um, but as soon as Rivals of Ix land come out, they'll probably get booted. So yeah, for the most part, this is the bottom of the barrel. Uh, first up, we've got an Ancient Brontodon. I know a lot of people argue that a... 9-9 is not bad ever, but really this guy has zero keywords, he has no evasion, he, his cost is astronomical, I mean, 8 cost is pretty pretty big even for EDH standards, so not the best. You know, he might be an okay include later on, I know I just, I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but swinging with Gashath and then revealing this guy isn't bad, so there's that. Then we've got a Belligerent Brontodon. Uh, this guy's interesting once again. I would more or less include this guy in like a rune deck or something like that. Or not a rune deck. What am I trying to say? Um, uh, I can't think of the name of it. The Tree Folk guy. Um, then in this deck. Because you really don't want to switch their toughness for their power, you know, for the most part. Most of our dinosaurs have way higher power than toughness. And really the ones we want to swing with, definitely. Doran, the Siege Tower. That's the guy I was trying to think of. Uh, so anyway, not an include that I'll probably keep in the deck after Rivals comes out. I've got a Colossal Dreadmaw. Now this guy's interesting. He's a 6-6 six, six tra with Trample. 6-6 six, six for 6 with Trample, so not bad. Um, like the artwork <laughs> a lot, but uh, really he doesn't have much that much else going for him. He might stay as an include if the 6 drops aren't you know filling out very well when Rivals comes out. But for now, he's not bad. I've got a Grazing Whiptail. So reach 3-4, four, four, four. Uh, Not bad again. This kind of fits in a certain need for our deck, which is being able to block huge flyers from, you know, potentially dealing us lethal commander damage or just lethal damage in general. So definitely not bad, though. We've got an Imperial Aerosaur. This guy's actually kind of interesting, but I don't really care for, like, one-time ETB effects like this. Yeah, it sometimes can steal you the game or get Gishath through like a blocker or something like that but for the most part one-time effects like this aren't that great to me you know maybe if there was a way to blink our dinosaurs which there are a ton of ways but you know since we're going kind of tribal here I didn't want to include like a you know Eldrazi Displacer or anything like that in here necessarily so anyway just an interesting dinosaur for sure I've got a spike-tailed ceratops um so four four for five can block an additional creature each combat so really good Defender, I guess. Yeah, yeah, not much to be said there. And I've got a Thrash of Raptors, so four for a three three. Um, as long as you control another dinosaur, it gets plus two plus zero oh, and has trample, so not bad. Yeah, I don't know. It's not the best though. And that's it for the meh dinosaurs. So after that, we'll go ahead and break into Enrage. Um, so obviously, as we talked about, there really isn't a whole. I mean, there's. A decent amount of enrage but not really enough to call it like a theme or anything like that so I just wanted to include a few ways to maybe trigger that or you know benefit from it so anyway let's break into there first up we've got a card from the actual excellent set and that's pounce so this is an instant speed fight mechanic which is never bad um, it's actually beneficial for the most part because you can even do this in response to somebody trying to well removing your creature you know have it fight something before it dies or so on and so forth and then trigger that in rage or you know there's a whole bunch of lines of play with this so interesting card I it's probably one of my favorite fight cards already even though I've never even played with it so there's that then we've got a savage stomp so this is a for the most part one cost sorcery speed spell that says put a plus one plus one counter on our on one of our creatures our dinosaur creatures then that creature fights target creature you can, you don't control. And I guess it doesn't have to be a dinosaur creature. That's kind of cool. Um, so another fight mechanic, uh, really good for triggering that enrage once again. You know, I think about this with like the card draw guy or the guy that ramps you. So interesting card, that's for sure. And then we've got a throwback, which is Dromoka's Command. Um, <laughs> this card really does it all. It's a two cost instant speed spell, and I have had a lot of experience with it, of course, since it's been out for a while. Instant speed. Choose two, model spells are always great, 
Prevent all damage target instant or sorcery would deal this turn. Pretty cool. Target player sacrifices enchantment. Pretty cool. Plus one, plus one counter on, our, on target creature, which is something we're already trying to do. And then target creature you control fights target creature you don't control, which is also something we're already trying to do. So really good modal card for the deck. Now we've got, of course, Pyrohemia. This is a big card for the deck. Um, at the beginning of your end step, if no creatures are on the battlefield, sacrifice Pyrohemia. Um, and then you can pay one red to deal one damage to target creature and our each, our, wait, sorry. Pyrohemia deals one damage to each creature, which is really good, and each player. So really interesting way to trigger our, our Enrage once again. Really interesting way to just, if we have the ramp guy out, you know, just ramp twice or... If we have the card draw out, just draw two cards and potentially kill some cre smaller creatures and then, you know, really make everybody upset with their life totals. And since we're going to be gaining so much life, we really don't care. And then we've got a Rite of Passage. This is a very similar-esque kind of mechanic to, or uh, enchantment to, I guess, the dinosaur that we've talked about previously, the Ag Agusaur. Um, so whenever your creatures receive damage, they put a plus one, plus one counter, or you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So... Once, once again, a really interesting way to buff up your team and just make all your dinosaurs huge. And as we talked about, we'll have a ton of 3-3 tokens to do this with, so really, really cool. And we've got Star of Extinction, another card from Ixalan. So this card's interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, for the most part, just a board wipe, unless we can give our dinosaurs indestructible, you know, with like Boros Charm or something like that. Um, but anyway, destroy target land, so not only you dealing a bunch of damage to everything, but you're also destroying a land. And then the Star of Extinction deals 20 damage to each creature and each player. So I know a few people have been kind of brewing around this with like uh, stuffy dolls and stuff like that. Really interesting way to look at this card, but for our purposes, it's really just a board wipe, you know, that gets rid of Planeswalkers as well. And like I said, if we can give our stuff indestructible, it just help us, helps us that much more. Then the old school version of this, which is our Star's Extinction, which is Blasphemous Act. This card's really good in the deck, of course. Um, if you're in a pinch and you really need a board wipe and you luckily have some enraged creatures on the battlefield, that's really good because then all of a sudden you're getting benefit for board wiping and then no one else is really getting that. So, yeah, we all know why this card's good already anyway, too. Then we've got an Earthquake, so just a really interesting way to once again trigger our inner rage or you know kill all those Avenger tokens or any other threats on the ground essentially. Um, so yeah, good include. And then some creatures that work with this uh, enrage mechanic, and that's Ashling the Pilgrim. So there are a few like mono red dinosaurs that you might include, like an Ashling deck, just because you can get those kind of reliably. You know those enrage triggers. Um, Interesting include. Uh, second one, of course, is Vigor, which is essentially doing kind of what our Rite of Passage does, but not quite. Uh, maybe I would think of this card as way better, of course. You know, it, it eventually ends up preventing the damage and putting a plus one, plus one counter on it. So, yeah. Yeah, so really cool. And then after Enrage, I labeled this one a little help because it's mainly about things that we can include to fill out our list because I think in all. For the most part, the dinosaurs uh, tally up to be about 22 or something like that. Really usable ones. There's about 31 that I would consider, but for the most part, about 20-something really, really effective ones. So anyway, here's some things that we can do to buff our team. So first up is Adaptive Automaton. This has been a tribal, you know, include forever. It uh, essentially comes down, turns itself into a dinosaur, which, keep in mind, Gashath cannot play this. It cannot swing and then deal damage and then you reveal this because it's not considered a dinosaur until you play it. So, um, Adapt Adaptive Automaton is a creature of the chosen type, which will be dinosaurs for us, and then other creatures get plus one, plus one that, of the chosen type. So, interesting include here. Um, same thing as I talked about before, this will not trigger off Gashoth's ability, but if you put it into play early, which is what we're trying to do, it can really help your team. Uh, it's Metallic Mimic, 2 cost, 2-1. Two, As Metallic Mimic enters the battlefield, she's creature type, which of course is Dinosaur. Uh, Metallic Mimic is the chosen type, of course, and then each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on. So, if you think about that with Gashath, all of a sudden it's an 8-7 instead of a 7-6, just from entering the battlefield. So, really, really cool. And then we have our Changelings. Um, these are great includes on any tribe that's low on numbers, which we definitely are. <laughs> 
So Chameleon and Colossus first up. Having protection from black is great. Having being able to pump itself is also great, especially with the amount of buffs that we'll have in the deck. And we've got a Changeling Berserker. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite cards. I I know a lot of people are kind of like, well, why would I want to champion my creature? But really, champion's actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, you can save your dinosaur. If you know you need to board wipe or something like that, you can just throw this guy down, you know, champion your commander, and then board wipe, and then all of a sudden your commander comes back into play. And really, you've lost your board, but you've gained your commander back. So not so bad. Um, it's got haste, so not bad once again. Plus, it comes in off of a Gishath trigger, so there's a lot of interesting ways to play with this card. And I, it, like I said, it's probably my favorite changeling. I've got a changeling hero, hero, which is you know once again similar to the card that we just talked about. Uh, by no means would I would you know recommend including all of these guys because champion and creature every time you play a creature could be pretty bad in the long run. But you know a few here and there are not bad. This guy's pretty much the same, except for he's got lifelink instead of haste, and it costs a little bit differently, of course, but yeah, another changeling to include. And we've got a changeling titan, so this is just a really big version of what we were talking about. I wish he had trample, but of course, you know, you can't get everything. There is one with trample, but he's like a 5-5 five five or something like that. Um, keeping changelings in mind, just look up all the changelings. You know, I'm sure, depending on your play style, you'll find ones that you like and ones that you dislike. You know, coming up next is my favorite probably, and that's Mirror Entity. Um, this is a great way to sneak in a win every once in a while because you just play this guy and all of a sudden you just buff everybody 20 and then swing at everybody. I know that's a lot of mana to use, but that's a really interesting example, I guess. <laughs> uh, exaggerated example, I guess I would say. Um, great card. I've seen it win many games, many, many games, especially when you have smaller tokens and all of a sudden they become, you know, five fives or something like that and they're swinging and killing everybody. So really interesting card. And I think that's the end of a little help. So up next, I wanted to talk about tribal. And these are cards that aren't dinosaurs, of course, but can benefit us from adding to our tribe and stuff like that. So first up is Herald's Horn. This is a new card from the Commander 2017 product. Um, I've had a little bit of experience with this at this point, you know, since the Commander product has been out for a while. It's really, really good. Three cost artifact. As it enters the battlefield, of course, you choose a creature type, which is going to be dinosaurs for us, of course. And then creatures of that type ca cost one colorless less. So you look at Gishath, that turns them into a seven cost instead of an eight cost. So already a huge benefit, not even getting into our deck. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card of the chosen type, you may reveal it and put it in your hand. So really, really cool. I love that type of effect. So yeah, definite include. Then we've got Descendant's Path. This is a three cost enchantment. Uh, it's got amazing artwork from Therese Nielsen on it. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature you control, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Otherwise, put that card on the bottom of your library. So it's kind of like a pseudo scry slash lurking predator slash I don't even know what else to call it, but really cool card, really interesting. Then we've got a Pillar of Origins. This is another new card from Ixalan. So essentially it comes into play, you choose a creature type, and then you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool, spend this mana only to cast creature spells of the chosen type. So decent mana rock especially if you're going full on tribal a little bit limiting if you're a little low you know can't find any creatures because all of a sudden it's just a two cost artifact that's sitting there and doing nothing for you so think about that when you're including it in other tribal decks like i definitely wouldn't include this in like low creature count decks like wizards or anything like that just because it's really for the most part not going to do anything for you and i'd really have a mind stone at that point anyway then we've got a vanquisher's banner this is another highlight like commander tribal card that came out of Ixalan. So enters the battlefield, choose creature type. It's going to be dinosaurs. Uh, five costs, I forgot to say that. Uh, creatures control the chosen type, get plus one, plus one, and this is the key part. Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so that's amazing. Of course, you know, just being able to kind of, I guess, uh, roll into dinosaur after dinosaur after dinosaur just by casting them is great. I've got a Kindred Summons. This card is ridiculous. I have played with it a few times so far. I've got one in my Elves deck, and then I've got another in my di Dragons deck. Um, seven cost instant speed. It says, uh, choose a creature type, reveal the cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control of that type. 
put those cards on the battlefield, then shuffle the rest of the revealed cards into your library. So imagine this, you know, you have like four or five tokens on the board plus your commander, and then all of a sudden you cast this spell and you reveal like the haste guy and like a whole bunch of other really big dinosaurs. All of a sudden your team, you're probably killing somebody at that point. So yeah, it's a really interesting card. Really like that it's instant speed, of course. Yeah, great include. I've got a Door of Destinies. Now this is a card that's been around for a long time and it's definitely really effective for basically any kind of creature attack centered deck and that's definitely what we're shooting for. So four cost artifact and there's a battlefield choose creature type. Um, whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type put a plus one plus one counter on Door of Destinies and then it says creatures you control of the chosen type get a plus one plus one counter for each charge counter on the Door of Destinies. So interesting card really really like it. I love that it keeps track of its own counters that way you don't have to put you know dice on each one of your dinosaurs so that makes it really fun too although sometimes that could be a little misleading if somebody doesn't quite understand the card so keep in mind when you're playing something like this to kind of you know keep everybody up to date on what's going on and that includes yourself <laughs> i've got a kindred charge this is a new card once again from the commander product so six costs uh choose a creature type for each creature you can control of the chosen type create a token that's a copy of the that creature those tokens gain haste exile the, them at the beginning of the next end step really good finisher um if you have enough dinosaurs you can really just play this and then swing at your other opponents and get rid of them so really cool card i've got two lands here one of them is path to ancestry first one up and that's uh enters the battlefield tapped it says tap add to your mana pool one mana of any color in your commander's color identity now that's key because you can just cast anything with this it's not limited to your creatures and then when when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander scry one so if you think about it in this deck we can either trigger this off dinosaurs or avatars so not bad obviously we're not going to be playing any non-dinosaur avatars so it doesn't really matter but anyway really interesting love the card i've got an unclaimed territory so this is the other half of that coin i guess so enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. You can tap to add colorless, so it still taps for mana, which isn't bad. And then add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast creatures of this, creature spells of the chosen type. So it's a little bit more limited than the other card, but it also doesn't enter tap. So I mean, there's, there's benefits and minuses to each one of them. But yeah, another card for us to include. Okay, and then we've got Commune with Dinosaurs. This is a tribal spell. So it says, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a dinosaur or a land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in your new order. So this is similar to like a Grizzly Salvage type effect or, you know, there's a myriad of cards that are similar to that. But anyway, exclusively for dinosaurs, I would say. You know, it definitely helped me out of a pinch the one time, you know, I was playing the deck. So <laughs> really cool include. Then we've got a crib swap. So if you think about this, if there's any card in your deck that says get blah back from, you know, whatever creature type back from your graveyard or something like this, uh, well, not creature type, any card type, you can grab this with certain spells. So interesting include. It's a dinosaur shapeshifter tribal instant. So interesting <laughs> effect that happens there. So just interesting removal overall, though. Then we've got a Dinosaur Stampede. This is a little bit of an overrun effect. It's not as good, of course, but it is instant speed. So, I mean, there's pluses and minuses there. It gives all your creatures plus two plus so, and then gives your dinosaurs trample. So, yeah, I would definitely consider it a way to finish the game. You know, if you just have a ton of tokens and need to swing, think about it. It turns those three three tokens into five threes, and that's considerable amount of damage. Okay, so that's it for the tribal. So let's break into... An ally, which uh, in this type of uh, low, I guess, count creature deck, you know, as far as like the creatures that we're trying to include already, you know, maybe having a little help from another tribe isn't a bad thing. And they definitely set that up in this block, you know, on purpose. And that uh, our help is essentially humans. So, first up, we've got two planeswalker cards, and that's Hotly War Warrior Poet is our first one. So, five costs, three loyalty, plus two is you gain life equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, which could be really good, you know, especially if we have Gishath or a dinosaur that's just huge out there. Zero ability is create a 3 3 dinosaur creature token with trample. So that's, again, benefiting us for making a whole bunch of to tokens. 
Then minus X, Watley Warrior Poet deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures. Creatures dealt damage this way can't block this turn. So, yeah, uh, I like pretty much everything except for the minus X, but the minus X can be useful. I mean, if you just need to swing through, you can use it to do that, or you need to trigger an rage mechanic, you can do that. There's a few different ways to look at this, you know. It's kind of like an Aurelius Fury or some, uh, you know, there's other cards that are similar to that. Um, but anyway, really cool. I love that they gave them, you know, our tribe of Planeswalker, essentially, plus, my God, the artwork on this card. I know I keep saying artwork, but my God, look at those feathers. Like, I keep looking, like, the purple on those feathers. That, that uh, yeah, it's so good. So cool. And then we've got the other half, and that's Watley Dinosaur Knight. So this is the card that comes in the Planeswalker deck, and as I alluded to earlier, this is the card that the other dinosaur ends up searching for. So it's a six cost, which is pretty steep, four loyalty Planeswalker, plus two, which is actually pretty good. Put two plus one plus one counters on up to one target creature, or dinosaur you control, so exclusively dinosaurs. Then minus three target dinosaur you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control, so... I, I almost wish that was a fight mechanic instead of like a just deal damage mechanic, but what can you do? And then the minus seven is really what we like this card for, and that's dinosaurs you control get plus four plus four until end of turn. So a really good way to overrun and finish. It's similar to like Garrick in that way. I wish it gave trample, but what can you do? And then we've got a Drover of the Mighty. This is one of our first like human ally things going on here. So it's a human druid, two cost one one. Uh, if you control a dinosaur, it gets plus two, plus two, which is good. And then it can also tap for any one mana of any color to your mana pool. So that's really good. That's what we're after anyway. We want those early game ramps. Then we've got an Emperor's Vanguard. So four cost, four, three human. Keep in mind, you know, this could be included in like any tribal human deck as well. So there's another, I guess, aspect to this card. But it has whenever... The Emperor's Vanguard deals combat damage to a player, it explores. So explore is a really interesting mechanic. Uh, it says, reveal the top card of your library, put that card into your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, then put that card back on the or put that card back or put it into your graveyard. So it's like a pseudo scry, which can be really good for you. Also it you know potentially potentially draws you out of lands on the top of your deck, stuff like that. So interesting card. I've got a Kinjali's Caller. So this is a 1 cost 0 3 human cleric that says dinosaur spells you ca cast cost 1 colorless less. So think about this. There's a lot of ways to ch chain this together with a few other cards to make your dinosaurs cost effectively just what they have in their colors. So, um, you know, you could, as, if you have enough of them, like uh, Urza's Incubator, this guy, and then another card that we'll see in a second, and then you know just a few other ones you can essentially make a shath cost three nine and that's it so that's pretty good oh this is the card i was talking about so this is an op otipec Huntmaster. i think that's how you say that uh two cost one two human uh dinosaur spells cost one colorless less and then it has tap dinosaur target dinosaur gains haste until in a turn so <laughs> this guy snuck up on me quite a few times in you know the pre-release games because i didn't even pay attention to the tap mechanic <laughs> so yeah he can definitely benefit you by you know sneaking in there for a little bit of extra damage when your opponent doesn't realize that you can give something haste i have got a priest of the awakening sun now this goes right on with our life gain i guess sub sub theme uh one one at the beginning of your upkeep you may reveal a dinosaur card from your hand if you do you gain two life so yeah and then it also has pay five, sacrifice Priest of the Awakening Sun, search your library for a dinosaur card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. So yeah, really good way to find some of those key dinosaurs for yourself. Then we've got Tilo Nali's Skin Shifter. So three costs, zero one. So that seems a little odd. <laughs> but it also has haste, and then whenever Tiloani's Skin Shifter attacks, it becomes a copy of another target non-legendary attacking creature until in a turn. Uh, as you see, they thought about that whole, like, uh, you know, swinging with extra legendary dinosaurs thing here. Um, anyway, like, you can turn this into pretty much anything. Like, the way I see it is you turn this into, like, early game, like, your ramp guy. That way, if they block, you go search for a land and or, like, your card draw guy or anything like that. Really interesting card. I know that I thought about including it in, like, my 1v1 burn deck, but just that one toughness kills it for me. <laughs> It's just too easily removed, and yeah, so interesting card. 
And then we've got a Taka. I'm not even going to try and say that. Honor Guard. <laughs> Human Soldier, 1 3, 2 cost. Creatures enter the battlefield, don't cause abilities to trigger. So if you think about it, there really aren't that many ETB effects in our deck. So yeah, there are a few interesting ones here that are okay, but for the most part, we don't really care about that. Our mechanics are all like triggered on by combat or by taking damage, you know, a lot of things like that. So really this coming out and stopping really a lot of those big ETB effects like, you know, like the rune decks and stuff like that, it's really beneficial for us and we do not mind. So this is a great include in the deck. And that's it for our allies. And I believe that is pretty much it for our show for now. Um, so anyway, dinosaurs, can it be done? Um, you know, as an answer, I would have to say, yeah, answer is yes. Life uh, finds a way, to quote Malcolm from the first uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed the uh, first episode of Brew Preview, and I hope you guys check back for new episodes. I'm going to try and do these pretty much every week. Um, for the most part, I'm going to try and release them on Tuesdays. We're also going to try and do a few more series on this channel, like uh, there's a big one that I'm trying to design called Let's Build It, which is essentially a more thorough deck tech where we actually go through why we've chosen the cards that we've chosen, why we're putting them in, and it may even go into like multi-tier, like this is uh, for Popper, this is for like uh, budget, this is for like super competitive. So anyway, once again, thank you guys for checking out the channel, and I hope you have enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Bye.